This video is a walkthrough of the questions and answers associated with the practice question entitled, Are People Satisfied with Their Jobs? A series of questions were asked in relation to the standard error, the mean, confidence intervals, etc. And it's based on a data set that I simulated to correspond very closely to an actual study that was relevant to job satisfaction. So we'll actually get an idea of how satisfied people are with their jobs in the real world, in the sense that these results correspond very closely to a real study. Now, Riza et al. collected job satisfaction ratings from over 19,000 people. I simulated 500 people just to make it more interesting from a couple of perspectives. And I'll show you that as I write in the practice question, these were the points on which people rated themselves with respect to their job satisfaction. From dislike it very much, dislike it somewhat, think it's okay, like it fairly well, like it very much. So there are several ways to answer the questions that are listed in this practice question. I'm going to show you one way to do it. it might not be the necessarily the fastest way, but it is certainly a commonly used way, at least in SPSS. So the first question is, what was the standard error of the mean? There are a couple of ways of answering that question. And I think given all the other questions that have to be answered in this practice question, I would answer it through the analyze descriptive statistics and explore utility. So when you click on explore, you'll see the job satisfaction variable here. Put that in the dependent list. Now you don't actually have to click on anything else, but I'll just show you that statistics uh, gives you descriptives and you can actually calculate confidence interval for the mean. That's actually a valuable and I think a fairly unique characteristic in the explore utility in SPSS. And it's specified at 95%, which is what I want. Uh, and options here don't really give you much in the way of uh, anything interesting. Uh, that's all I'm going to show here. That's really all we need. And I'll click OK. So the key table is entitled descriptive statistics here. And we can see the mean was 2.90. So when you think of the scale upon which these data were rated, people scored a little bit lower than think it is OK on average. So people, as I allude to in one of the questions later on, are people statistically significantly less happy with their jobs than they are happy with their jobs? And the middle point is 3. So we'll get back to that in a few minutes. For now, though, we can see that the standard error of the mean was estimated at 0.047. So the answer to the first question is 0.047. Now the second question was, what was the standard error of the median? Now, to my knowledge, that is not actually possible to get in an automatic way in SPSS. But if you look through the textbook, you'll see that the standard error of the median is very closely related to the standard error of the mean. In fact, all you have to do is you have to multiply the standard error of the mean by a value of 1.253, and that gives you the standard error of the median. So in this case, the standard error of the median, when you multiply 1.253 times 0.047, you get 0.0588 and round it up 0.059. So the standard error of the median is always larger than the standard error of the mean. The median is actually 3 right here. So the standard error, the, me the median is a little bit bigger than the mean. And unfortunately, we don't get the standard error of the median here from SBSS. We have to calculate it ourselves by multiplying the standard error of the mean by 1.253. So the third question is, what is the standard error of skew? And that is estimated right here with the 0 0.109 standard error column, 0 0.109 skewness. So that's an easy one. And what was the standard error of kurtosis? Well, that's actually just a little bit lower. Standard error of kurtosis was 0.218. And we can see here that the distribution was actually not completely normally distributed. It was negatively kurtotic and negatively skewed uh, a little bit. So the next question is, did the skew 95% confidence intervals intersect with zero? And this is a tough question because SPSS does not give you the confidence intervals for the skew or kurtosis. It does give you confidence intervals for the mean, however. Unfortunately, not skew and kurtosis. That's a bit of a bummer. It would be useful if it did. If we wanted to calculate the standard error of skew, we can still do so with a few calculations. You might recall from the textbook that in order to calculate the confidence intervals associated with skew, we need to multiply the standard error, which in this case is 0.109, by a value 
that we derive from the t distribution. And I call that a multiplier sometimes, or a product. And in this case, we need to use the function that makes a call to the t distribution that is t period inverse, or inv period 2, t. And then I have to give Excel the probability that I want specified. Now, don't get tripped up and input 95% or 0.95. It's actually the ends of the distribution, not the entirety of the distribution that's being captured by the t value. It's that t value and beyond in terms of the probability of having observed that observation or more extreme. So we have to type 0.05 here, which is 1 minus 0.95. And then we have the degrees of freedom which are equal to n minus 1. So we now have a value to multiply against 0 0.109. And that's easily done by i6 times j6. And that gives us 0.214. Once we get our multiplier, we can actually then add and subtract that value from the point estimate of skew. So now here we're talking about skew. And that's the standard error, that's the t, and that's the product. And we just need to add and subtract the product from the point estimate. And well, what is the point estimate for skew? It is negative 0.211. And once we have the negative 0.211, we can add and subtract this value in order to get the confidence intervals associated with the result. So we have negative 0.211, which is the skew point estimate. And we need to subtract 0.214. And that gives us negative 0.425. So that's the lower bound. And then we have the upper bound, which is adding a value, negative 0.211, and plus 0.214, and we get negative 0.21. So to the answer to the question, did the confidence intervals 95% intersect with 0, uh, we can see that they didn't. In fact, I've got the wrong answer here. It should be negative 0.43 and negative 0.21. So the answer is no, it did not intersect with zero. And what does that mean? That means that there is statistically significant skew in the data. So did the kurtosis confidence intervals intersect with zero? Let's see if I actually got this one correct. Let's go with uh, kurtosis here. And what was the point estimate, which would be the first thing to look at? Negative 0.58. And the standard error was estimated at 0.218. And the t value is exactly the same, so I can actually just copy that here. And then I can go this way, because I just need to multiply the same value together. Oops, that didn't work. I should actually be going this way. So this i7 times j7 is the multiplication of that. So then we end up with our product and our point estimate. And now we just need to add and subtract. So minus 0.858 minus the product for the lower bound. 0.428 gives negative 1.28. And the upper bound is now the point estimate, negative 0.858, and plus 0.428. And that's negative 0.43, negative 0.43. Let's see if that marries up to the results I've got. Yeah, so we got the same results there. Now, whether you do the calculations to three decimal places, two decimal places, will have an impact on exactly what result you get. Personally, I'm not that concerned with exactly what the precise answer was. I'm more concerned with whether the steps are being followed and the interpretations are correct. So in this case here, we have a lower bound and an upper bound that are both negative, which implies that with 95% confidence from a repeated sampling perspective, 
the kurtosis estimate is statistically significantly different from, from zero. So the distribution of job performance is statistically significantly different from zero. And we can actually look at the distribution, which I haven't shown. And it looks something like this. You can see a huge cliff dropping off for people who would say, I very much like my job. Uh, very few people actually said that they do. So I like it very much. Only a small number of people actually said that. Most people are somewhere between two and four. But you have a, a chunk of people here who are quite unhappy with their jobs. So there's, the distribution is not normally distributed. There's statistically significant amount of skew and a statistically significant amount of kurtosis. I do want to say here, though, because this is really important, that just because the data have uh, data, the data are non-normally distributed from a statistically significant perspective, that doesn't necessarily mean that statistics that assume normally distributed data need uh, the data to be more normally distributed than this. So I really encourage you to check out the chapter on the test of the difference between uh, sample means rather than just the one sample t-test which I cover in this chapter to learn more about not relying on statistical significance to tell you whether you violated an assumption or not. So the last question, uh, or the second last question I believe, is in relation to the confidence intervals for the mean. What were the 95% confidence intervals for the mean? Well that actually is reported in the explore utility results. 0.281 and 2.99. Wow, that's so close to 3. So from a repeated sampling perspective, if we were to carry out a study with a sample size of 500 people over and over and over again, 95% of the means would be between 2.81 and 2.99. That's a pretty decent narrow range between the point estimate of 0.29. It's not really impressive, but it is impressive. Now the last question uh, was in relation to was the, it's a one sample t-test that's being asked here, was the job satisfaction mean statistically significantly different from the midpoint of three? Now again, these are real data, so Riza from memory didn't actually test this hypothesis in their paper, so I'm asking the question, the, the mean or the non-sample mean midpoint of three means something and it means think it's okay. Is the average response to the question about job satisfaction, is it less than three? Because if it is less than three, that implies that most people don't like their job. Uh, and the answer to the question is, it turns out it is. There are fewer people uh, who like their job than don't like their job from the perspective of the of the mean. The median actually ended up being three, which implies that just as many people liked or disliked their job. Because the, no, the distribution was non-normal, the mean was actually uh, pulled to the left side of the distribution. So it's still an interesting question, and, and uh, it is a little bit lower. And this, I can actually, sh I should actually show you how to do the one sample t-test. So compare means, one sample t-test, job satisfaction, and the test value is 3.00 and I click OK and here's that negative T value 2.12 because the sample mean is 2.90 the test value is 3.00 here's the standard error of the mean again uh, and we have a T value of negative 2.12 degrees of freedom of 499 and the P value is 0 0.034 and that is because that this p-value, the significance two-tailed, is less than 0 0.05, we declare that the sample mean of 2.90 and the non-sample mean of 3.00 are statistically significantly different from each other. And the mean difference confidence intervals are actually reported right here. So it's somewhere between negative 0.19 and negative 0 0.01. So it just barely made the cutoff of statistical significance. And that's why the p-value is actually fairly close to 5, but it is still 0 0.05, but it is less. Correspondingly, 
the confidence intervals for the mean were also suggestive of uh, of a difference between uh, the non-sample mean of three and the sample mean of two point nine zero because the confidence interval was between two point eight one and two point nine nine it almost intersected with with three but it didn't and that's again consistent with the t value approach to uh, testing the difference between a one sample and a non sample mean value so this is a run through of the practice question yes it's a lot of work a lot of questions but there's a lot of good quality answers that are derived from these series of questions and uh, it's interesting to ask the question of uh, what percentage of people dislike their job in terms of a mean difference between sample mean and the t value uh, the test value of 3.0